Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today we're going to do another Blast from the Past, a Retro Nostalgia special. I'm going to do a taste test of Vesta Chow Mein. Dingy dingy ding 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 ding. Sort of thing. Couple of shout outs before we start, one to Karen Daly, who requested something from that um, Prawn Cocktail Years cookbook, which is full of recipes from like the 70s when this happened. It, in fact, this started happening in the late 60s. And also shout out to my new Patreon superfan, Simon Lear. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Ta. So the Vesta range of, well, seriously exotic foreign food, which we had never heard of. I mean, I was only like a kid. Nobody went abroad. It just wasn't a happening thing. Um, we were all poor, <laughs> lived on a handful of hot gravel, stuff like that. And then this appeared and it's buddies. So there was chow mein, there was chop suey, there was beef curry, there was French chicken supreme, there was Spanish paella and uh, ooh, what Italian risotto. Cool. Amazing. This was completely revolutionary. We'd never seen or tasted anything like it. I mean, you can't believe it now, but you know, at the time, there hardly any takeaways or foreign restaurants. Certainly not in the mining village in South Yorkshire where I grew up. Absolutely nothing. Anyway, I had it in my head that this should cost a couple of quid. But actually, I got it from Pound Stretcher, a budget store, and it was four pounds. This is just... Well, I mean, you know, we're in a, an insane period of inflation, but four pounds. It better be good. I've watched a few old telly adverts for Vesta. Uh, they, they pronounce it Chow Mein in, in, the, in their videos. And everybody talks like the Queen. They're all very posh. So one of the things that I do remember from having Chow Mein as a kid is the, uh, the crispy noodles on top. They're, they're deep fried. And the cooking instructions actually tell you to use a chip pan and a chip basket, which is proper, proper old school. You never see any any stuff like this telling you that you've got to uh, fry it, but you do have to fry them. However, they've changed them. They're not as they used to be. They're not even the same thing at all. They're not noodles. They are lentil curls, which I find astonishing. And I've read quite a bit about this online and it's not good. Nobody likes them and nobody really understands why they've done it. The company is um, owned by Premier Foods now. Originally it was Bachelor's Foods in sunny Sheffield and I used to work in their factory but not on these. So the company spokesperson says the original supplier of those crispy noodles closed down, went bust, gone away and I, you know I just cannot believe there's only one supplier of those things in the world and also well you know I mean lentils are great things but um they're not noodles, they're bleh, bleh. Right, let's open the box. Take the money! And see what's inside. As I recall, there were many things inside. And yeah, yeah, there we go. The, oh, they're very short and flat. The, these will be the noodles for boiling. These will be the lentil curls for frying. That is soy sauce. I had never seen soy sauce before the first time I had chow mein and I loved it. If I had a bottle of it, I would have drunk the whole thing. I still do. And Vesta sauce mix. Okay. Now I've got to tell you, this, this is beef chow mein. The ingredients, well, soft noodles, 46%. Other things, dried vegetables. Lentil curls are 13% of the total contents, dark soy sauce is 3% and dried cooked beef 2.5%. So obviously that's why it's so expensive, it's got such a lot of premium quality beef in it. Right anyway, let's get on and cook it. They give two methods for cooking this, you can do it on the hob or you can do it in the microwave. The hob takes a bit longer, but that's the one I'm going to do. So you empty the chow mein into a saucepan, stir in 525 ml of cold water, bring to the boil, stirring continuously, and simmer for five minutes. Then add the soft noodles, bring to the boil and simmer for 15 minutes. Then add the soy sauce and stir that into the soft noodles. 
for the crispy curls, you can use a chip pan with a chip basket, but uh, I'm just going to use the wok type thing because it looks more Chinesey with some oil in it, just vegetable oil or sunflower oil. And you want that pretty hot and just test it by chucking one of the curls in when you think it's hot enough and see if it works because it should puff up and cook in a, in a matter of seconds. So when the fat is hot, put your crispy curls in, turn them a bit till they're fried all over and all puffed up and then take them out and drain them and serve them on top of the wonderful chow mein. Okay, here's the <laughs> chow mein. Very, very sloppy. I thought it should be much thicker than this, but well, there you go. If that's a portion for one, that's a good good old portion. It's too much for me. Yes, the curly lentil things. Well, I, d I don't think I'll be able to eat much of this with the old choppy stickies, because as you know, I don't know how to use them really. <laughs> I give up. Right, let's try one of these weird lentil curls. They're okay. They don't belong on this. They're completely wrong. I don't know what possessed them to use lentils. Yeah. Yeah. And these carrots, I don't know how they chop them so small and the peppers as well. Ridiculous. Saw a hunk of beef there. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> that is f awful. Good God. <sighs> nothing out of 10. There is nothing nice about that at all. Or oh, maybe the soft noodles are okay. You can't really mess those up, but. Ugh. Yeah. I think I can do better. All right, Vesta Chow Mein 2023 edition. Nul point. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.